With almost 200 countries jam-packed around the world, sometimes borders get a bit complicated. Today we're taking a look at 15 of the most unique and unusual borders on Earth. Number 15. The Triple Frontier You normally think of a border as the place that separates two countries or states, but because of the way that they've been drawn up, there's some places in the world where you can actually stand on the intersections of three or more. Possibly the most stunning of these is the Triple Frontier in South America, which marks the spot where the borders of Paraguay, Argentina, and Brazil meet. The exact spot is near the Iguazu Falls, which is the largest network of waterfalls in the world. Both because of this formation and the ease of crossing the borders here, it's a popular tourist destination, and each country has a city close by. Cuida del Este in Paraguay, Puerto Iguazu in Argentina, and Foz do Iguazu in Brazil. There's also a hydroelectric plant that makes use of the energy generated by the falls and provides power to all three countries. And to mark the exact spot where their borders converge, there are three obelisks, one in each country, that's painted in their respective flag's colors. Number 14. Penon de Velez de la Gomera The island of Penon de Velez de la Gomera is a Spanish enclave that's off the coast of Morocco and is connected to the mainland by a small beach. It's used as a Spanish military outpost, so only has a small population of personnel. But it holds the record of being the place where you'll find the shortest land border anywhere in the world. Historically, this unusual situation came about in the late 15th century, when Spain and Portugal made an agreement about how they would establish regions of influence on the North African coast. Spain took the small island in the early 16th century, and despite continual objections by the Moroccans and occasional incursions which have seen the land occupied in protest as recently as 2012, Spain still officially lays claim to the island. Things are so controversial that there's no official access there from the mainland, and instead of crossing it through Morocco, the military personnel that are stationed there can only reach it by helicopter. While you may think it may be easier for Spain to give the land back, they insist that it gives them a strategically vital position on the African coast, and one from where they can monitor the Mediterranean Sea in a way that's not possible from the European coast. Number 13. Barl Nassau Usually, if you visit or live in a town, it's quite clear which country you're in when you're there. But there's one town on the border between Belgium and the Netherlands where things are a lot more complicated. Known as Barl Nassau, it's the result of countless treaties that have been signed over centuries, whereby small parcels of land were exchanged between the two. Today, along the border, there are 22 Belgian enclaves in the Netherlands. And with these, there are further pieces of land that are again enclaves that belong to the Netherlands. This has created quite a complicated situation in the town where individual houses have been defined as being in one country or the other and next-door neighbors can find themselves being residents of a completely different side. In fact, simply walking along the main street will see you technically crossing the border a number of times, and they try to make things easier for visitors by installing iron pins along the ground, which mark where the border runs. Houses have different style numbers depending on which country they're part of, and will often have a flag outside to denote their nationality. It's just lucky that, as a part of the European Union, residents and visitors are allowed to freely move between the two countries, because if the border was tightly regulated, it'd be impossible to live a normal life here. Number 12. Jungholz Most borders are formed along natural geographical formations, or are drawn up by cartographers and lawmakers during tense negotiations. But the peculiar situation of an Austrian town called Jungholz is a result of a business transaction that took place many hundreds of years ago, and the residents are still feeling the effects to this day. It's in the Austrian state of Tyrol, but the only place at which the region is actually connected to the rest of Austria is through the peak of the Schrogtrafen Mountains. Otherwise, it's completely surrounded by Germany, and it's impossible to reach the town without passing through its neighboring country. The reason this happened is that in 1342, a resident purchased the land from a Bavarian resident and incorporated the land into the rest of his possessions in the state of Tyrol. In 1844, a treaty was signed between Austria and Germany that formalized the land as being part of Austria, but in many ways, the residents there have been treated as being German. With no route that goes directly into Austria, the town was, for example, a part of the German customs area before Austria joined the European Union in 1995. Furthermore, before the European countries adopted a single currency, the Euro, residents in Jungholz used to use the German mark instead of the Austrian shilling. Sending mail to residents is a complicated business too, because you can technically use either a German or an Austrian postcode, something that can have a serious impact on the cost of sending it, depending on where the letter or package originates from. 
Number 11. Lake Constance Lake Constance is actually made up of three distinct bodies of water that are on the northern foot of the Alps and are fed by the River Rhine. Due to its position, it's a natural tripoint boundary between the three countries of Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. And while the banks lie in their respective countries, the actual confluence of the three is at an unspecified point within the lake. As the countries have never formally agreed where in the lake their territories meet, this remains one of the vaguest borders in the world. To make matters even more difficult, the three countries hold different views on how things should be. According to the Swiss, the border runs through the middle of the lake. The Austrians argue that the lake belongs to all three, an arrangement known as the condominium. And the Germans don't have an official position at all. It may seem unimportant in the modern world where the three are a part of the European Union in one way or another, but there are occasions when this ambiguity has caused problems. Who, for example, has the rights to fishing in the waters of the lake? And recently, a family found themselves in legal difficulties because they lived on the lake in a houseboat and couldn't prove which of the countries they actually lived in. Number 10. Wagga Border the Wagha border has separated India and Pakistan since their independence in 1947, and because of the way the border lines were drawn up, it takes its name from the village of Wagha, which is less than 2,000 feet from the actual border and lies just inside Pakistan. Because of its position and location on a major road, this is one of the most important border crossings between the two countries and where a huge amount of traffic, trade, and migration pass through. In many ways, it looks like any other border crossing town in the world, and you wouldn't think there's anything unusual about it if you visited during the day. If you happen to be there just before sunset, however, you'll be treated to one of the most unique and surprising border rituals that take place anywhere on Earth. Every evening since 1959, the Indian Border Security Force and the Pakistan Rangers have conducted the lowering of the flag ceremony. During this military exercise, troops perform a ritualistic dance that involves fast movements and extremely high leg races and ends with a perfectly coordinated lowering of both flags on either side of the border. The soldiers are specially trained for the ceremony, and after having featured aggressive tones for many decades, it's now seen as a gesture of the brotherhood between the two countries. It's now such a popular event that it draws hundreds of thousands of spectators from both countries and tourists from the rest of the world each year. Number 9. Hotel Arbez Historically, especially before international organizations were set up to help resolve issues, the designation of borders was a contentious topic between neighboring countries. Each side, of course, would want the best land to be their own, and disputes often led to unique outcomes. There is perhaps none as unusual as what happened between France and Switzerland in the Vallée du Dépé. Long a part of Switzerland, the French wanted it, and the region was annexed by Napoleon in 1802. It was eventually returned to Switzerland, but became French again after the two countries agreed to a land swap. The land in question was just to the north of the valley and meant that the one French town of La Cure was split in half by the newly agreed border. A local businessman realized he had an opportunity to take advantage of this, and he built a building that straddled the border, with a grocery on the Swiss side and a bar on the French. In later years, it was refurbished and opened as the Hotel Arbez, which to this day is technically in both countries. This led to a rather unique situation during the Second World War, where during the German occupation of France, Nazi troops were able to enter and sit on the French side of the hotel, but not the Swiss one. Because the stairway to the top floor ended in Swiss territory, they were therefore unable to go upstairs, and the hotel became an important refuge for French resistance fighters. Still, today the border runs through the hotel, and if you stay there, you can book the honeymoon suite, where the bed is half in France and half in Switzerland as well as several other rooms that are technically in both countries. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Passport Island The Kingdom of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia had long wanted to improve links between each other, and in 1981 construction began on the King Faud Causeway, which is a 16-mile network of five bridges to connect the two. At a cost of $800 million, it was opened in 1986, and there was finally a land crossing to allow freight and passengers to drive between the countries. Of course, as a route that crossed the border, an official checkpoint was needed to oversee who was passing between the two countries. They didn't want this to be located in either of the territories, so instead the decision was to build an artificial island that bridges would go through, and it was there that the customs office was built. Officially called Middle Island, it's more commonly known as Passport Island and features a border station, two towers that are used by the Coast Guard, and two 213-foot-tall tower restaurants. 
Half of the island is designated as being in Saudi Arabia, while the other half in Bahrain, and it also holds the record of being the place where the closest two McDonald's restaurants in two separate countries can be found, after the company built one on either side of the border. Number 7. Kuch Behar District India's Kuch Behar District is in the state of West Bengal and is on the border with Bangladesh. For a long time, this was one of the most complicated border regions in the world, with 92 Bangladeshi enclaves in Kuch Behar, and similarly 102 Indian enclaves across the border in Bangladesh. According to local legend, this unique situation occurred as the result of a high-stake chess game between the Raja of Kuch Behar and the Maharaja of Rangpur several centuries ago, and led to some rather strange divisions. The largest one, for example, was an Indian enclave called Balapara Kagarbari. It completely surrounded a Bangladeshi enclave called Upanchauki Bajini, which itself entirely surrounded another Indian enclave called Dahala Kagarbari, making it the only third-order enclave in the world. In modern times, however, this arrangement was proving to be far too complicated to administer, and the two governments worked to simplify things. In 1974, an agreement was made to exchange some of the enclaves, and further revisions were agreed in 2015 that returned all the parcel of land back to the countries that they were located in. All that is apart from one, which is called Dahagram Angar Prota, and is a Bangladeshi enclave just across the border in India. Number 6. Lilivia Lilivia is a small town in the Catalonia region of Spain, but unlike most Spanish towns that are surrounded by land that also belongs to the country, this town is entirely surrounded by a department of southern France. The origins of this unique situation can be traced back more than 1,500 years, and it was once the capital city of Cerdanya. It, along with several other places, found themselves within French territory as the official land borders were established, and in 1659 the Treaty of the Pyrenees attempted to resolve this peculiarity. It gave everything within French territory to France, with the exception of Lilivia, because it only stipulated that villages would be handed over, and by that time, Lilivia was considered to be a town because of its historical significance. There have been a number of times since then that the French have had an opportunity to try to claim the town for themselves, but in order to maintain diplomatic relations with Spain, they've avoided them. There even used to be an agreement that allowed residents to travel the mile or so across French land to reach Spain, but more recently the Shenzhen Agreement that allows European residents to freely move between countries has negated the need for any special arrangements. Number 5. Bir Tawil and Halaib Triangle There are very few pieces of land in the world that aren't claimed by any country, especially ones that are a natural fit within a nation's border. But there's a place on the boundary between Egypt and Sudan that neither country wants anything to do with. Called Bir Tawil, it covers an area of almost 800 square miles and has been described as being the only habitable place on Earth that remains unclaimed. It is, however, made up of extremely hot desert, and it's because of this that the two countries refuse to lay claim to it. In 1899, the border between the country was formally established by drawing a straight line between the two. But in 1902, a more irregular-shaped border was proposed as the administrative boundary. From the Egyptian perspective, the political boundary is the one that should be adhered to, while the Sudanese want the administrative one to be the official line, and this has important consequences depending on who's right. That's because it's not just Bir Tawil that's up for grabs, but another region called the Halaib Triangle, which is covered in fertile land and already has a settlement in it. Both countries lay claim to the Halaib Triangle, based on the border they hold to be true. As a result, both reject ownership of Bir Tawil, if either set foot there, it would essentially admit that the other country can control Halaib, so it's remained empty ever since. This has led to the unique situation where individuals have tried to claim Bir Tawil for themselves, even to the point where they've tried to move there and install themselves as leader of the piece of land. While these claims haven't yet been accepted by the international community, one of the reasons might be that none of these people have actually traveled to the region in person due to its inaccessibility and hostile climate, and have instead tried to lay claim to it online. Number 4. The Northwest Angle Many of the states in the U.S. have had borders drawn up by placing straight lines on maps, but the most peculiar border situation in the country is where it meets with Canada. There's a region called the Northwest Angle, which is legally part of Minnesota, but is separated from the rest of the state by the Lake of the Woods and the only way to reach the U.S. by land is by traveling through Canada first. Essentially, it operates as an enclave of the U.S. and is actually the most northerly point of the contiguous states, with the only piece of land that's above the 49th parallel. 
You might think this situation has come about as the result of a wealthy landowner petitioning for a boundary to protect his land, or because the Northwest Angle has a particular strategic importance, but the truth is this has all arisen because of misinformation. When deciding where the border should pass, Benjamin Franklin and the British representatives were relying on the Mitchell map of the country, and this showed the lake as being an oval shape and didn't state where the source of the Mississippi River was. Because they wanted the river's source to be in the U.S. and believed it to be the Northwest Angle, they ensured it was kept in the country, without realizing there was no way to reach it without crossing through Canada. It's a quirk of history that remains to this day, but now there's no real reason to change things. With just 119 residents at the last count, it hardly causes too much of a problem, and arrangements have been made to allow them to pass through Canada on an honor system. Number 3. Boundary Islet Tasmania is a state of Australia, but as an island you might think that it has no land border with its nearest neighboring state of Victoria. There is, however, a small 4.9 acre piece of land called Boundary Islet, and it's virtually split in half, with the top part being part of Victoria and the lower part being part of Tasmania. This situation was completely unintended and was again the result of misinformation at the time that the maps were drawn up. When lawmakers were deciding where Tasmania begins and Victoria ends, they wanted to draw a line through the base, straight without crossing any islands, so that the border would pass across the water. According to the maps that they had, the latitude of the line was 39 degrees 12 seconds south, would do just that. But the maps were wrong. They had been drawn up by Captain John Black in 1801, who, after surveying the islet, recorded it as being slightly further to the north than it actually is. If this had been true, it would have had entirely been within the jurisdiction of Victoria and known as Northeast Islet, but once the mistake was realized, it was renamed and shared between the two. Number 2. Kunjareb Pass The Kunjareb Pass is the highest paved international border in the world and is one of the most spectacular routes where you can cross between China and Pakistan. Built in 1982, it crosses the Karakoam Mountains and reaches a maximum height of 17,400 feet. There were easier routes that could have been picked, but for security reasons, Chinese authorities believe that this would be the safest option. In China, it can be accessed by the China National Highway 314 and is 81 miles from Tashkirkan, whereas in Pakistan, it's 47 miles from Sost, where the customs and immigration posts can be found. Due to its altitude, the pass is often covered in snow, and it's usually closed to all vehicles between December and April. It also holds two other unique records, as it's the place where you'll find the highest ATM in the world. It's one of the very few border crossings where drivers have to change the side of the road that they drive on. Due to its limited use and as a result of weather conditions, few haulage companies have built infrastructure to make use of the Kunjarab Pass and instead opt for alternative routes. It is, however, a popular tourist and visitor route because of the amazing scenery. But if you ever plan to travel through, you have better ensure you've got a reliable vehicle that can travel through several feet of snow. Number 1. The Korean DMZ when you pass across most border crossings, the chances are you'll see tall fences and armed officers, but there's no border in the world that's as heavily fortified as the one that separates North and South Korea. Not only is there a border line, but there's a demilitarized zone that's around two and a half miles wide. And this was created in 1953 by an agreement between China, the UN, and North Korea. The reason for this is that the Korean War never officially ended, and the region is needed to ensure there's a buffer between the two countries. The whole stretch is mined, fenced, and constantly under surveillance, but there's one place where representatives from both sides are able to meet in the middle, the Joint Security Area. It's there that negotiations between two countries take place, and there are a number of buildings that can be used for meetings and accommodation. Still, it's hardly a safe place to be. There have been numerous incidents along the entire border ever since it was first established. It's the one border in the world that ordinary citizens have virtually no chance of ever being able to cross and is usually regarded as one of the most dangerous stretches of land on the planet. This doesn't, however, prevent some from attempting to cross, often those from the north trying to flee to the south. But these attempts usually end in tragedy. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.